Hello, in this SFML video, we are going to start collision detection. So what we're going to be doing is rectangle or bounding box collision de detection. I'll explain exactly what that is in a moment. Let me just show you what I've already set up. So what I've got is just a couple of sprites and one is of, you'll see in a second, Crash Bandicoot and the other one is of Aku Aku. It's going to turn off Skype so I don't get any, you know, notifications, sounds. So I can move the Crash Bandicoot sprite, as you can see. Obviously, the speed of it doesn't actually really matter. What we're going to do is detect when these two sprites have collided using bounding box collision de detection. All of the... SFML features that have been used to create this base application have already been covered in previous videos from sprite loading, texturing, setting position, movement, all of that stuff has already been covered. So if any of this seems alien to you, feel free to go back and check out one of those videos. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me and I'll help. So let's get on to bounding box collision det detection, also known as rectangle collision detection you'll see now why it's called that. So essentially, when you do bounding box collision detection, I'm not gonna keep saying bounding box and then say rectangle as well, I'm just gonna say bounding box for both of them. So when you do bounding box collision de detection, it essentially puts a rectangle, the smallest rectangle that you can put around your sprite and it uses that to collide it with essentially another rectangle. So we've got these two rectangles here. So if these were sprites, the smallest rectangle that you could fit around each one of these rectangles is, well, the size of the current rectangle. So if I move this around, as you can see, moving it around, if we were checking for collision detection using bounding box, then it would come back as false because it hasn't collided with the blue rectangle yet but if I overlap it like so it has collided it has still collided because it is inside of it essentially bounding box collision detection checks if one sprite is overlapping or essentially in another sprite and the same principle applies with this as well so that's a bounding box let me just show you how to implement it's extremely simple though I'm using sprites it works for other stuff as well, like text, and it also works for shapes. Essentially anything that have a bounds, essentially a box around it. So to check for collision detection, all you do is do if you choose one of the objects that you're choosing to check for collision, you do the name of that. So it's the Crash Bandicoot sprite, the, the sprite that I was moving around, dot get global bounds so this is returning a rectangle again the smallest rectangle with the current position relative to the rest of the window so local bounds doesn't take into consideration transformations aka essentially where it is on the window so that's the reason we want global bounds dot and we do intersects, there's two methods. So you can do either intersects. Intersects allows you to check if another rectangle has collided with it, essentially what we was doing over here. And that's essentially what you would do if you're checking for collision between two, let's say sprites, two objects. If, for example, you have a sprite and you wanna check maybe if a particular point is within that sprite, a use case scenario for this could be if you click on your window you get the coordinates of that click again which has already been covered in previous videos feel free to check them out you get that click point and then you pass it into contains and the contains tells you yes or no if it's essentially overlapping so that's the difference between intersects and contains and a couple of use case scenarios so going back to the intersects so it takes a rectangle, which is essentially what this method returns. So this is returning a rectangle, which also has methods of its own. 
So now we specify the other rectangle that you want to check for collision with. So it's called Aku Aku. Oh, I'll zoom in a bit so you can see this a little easier. And it's dot get global bounds again. And that's it. That's literally all you have to do. So if this condition is true, then collision has occurred. So I'm going to do STD C out collision STD end line. And if, if it's not true, then no collision has occurred. So if I do no collision, save that. Let's run it now. So we got our application. It's saying no collision because this is not overlapping this particular spot. So if I keep, if I start moving it, still saying no collision. Uh, as you can see, it says collision. I go off it. No collision. Collision. No collision. No collision. Collision. Pretty simple stuff, really. Again, collision. It doesn't really matter where it is. It checks for collision, and it works fantastically. So you probably won't want to do, hey, let me just close this down a second. You probably won't want to do just C outs to the console. Your a, a use case scenario for collision could be if the player collides with a particular sprite, you could collect it. So you could trigger some sort of collect method or maybe it's an obstacle or it's some sort of enemy and you die and you show some sort of game over the screen or you restart the game. That's just a couple of use case scenarios. But let me just show you a problem. Uh, it's not a bug. This is just the limitations of bending box collision de detection. As you can see, the two sprites aren't colliding. Watch what happens now. It's saying collision, even though as far as we're aware, in terms of you know just looking at it, those objects aren't colliding anymore there than they are here. Yes, they're nearer, but why is this saying collision? And like I said, with bounding box, it fits, it essentially creates the smallest rectangle that it can fit each one of these objects in. So the rectangle for this would be essentially be over here. And as you see, as we go down here, it overlaps with this rectangle. That's the limitation of bounding box. For something a bit more precise, you can look into a physics engine like Box2D, which has better collision detection. You can also look into implementing your own pixel perfect collision de detection, or you can look into sort of almost like range collision detection, uh, which is just checking if it's a certain distance away, which is good for circle collision detection, which we'll cover in a separate video. Because if I go back here, we have a circle over here. Let me just move this rectangle out of the way. So as you can see, we aren't colliding with this object at all. Still not. Now we're colliding with it. But if we were to place our rectangle here, though it doesn't look like it's colliding, it is still colliding with the smallest rectangle that can fit around the circle. And the same principle applies with more complex objects like these. That's the limitations of bounding box. So when you create your game, you will have to determine whether or not bounding box will suffice for certain collision detection. And depending on the actual look of your objects, your sprites, maybe they are more rectangular. And sometimes game decisions and the uh, so sort of the aesthetics are changed and are decided based upon limitations of an engine. Again, there are other ways of doing collision de detection with SFML, so we'll be covering them. So that's just something to bear in mind when doing bounding box. So this has just been a video for SFML checking collision detection using rectangle, also known as bounding box collision detection. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There will be a link in the description. If you 
have any other queries and you want to check out our Facebook or Twitter or Google Plus pages, feel free. There'll be another link in the description or links, I should say, in the description to that. There will be a link to the GitHub page. So feel free to check out the source code. It's not very complex. It's very, very simple. And finally, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next SFML video.